Guys, this is Mobin. We are talking about the pathology of the respiratory system in that the series of lectures now is the pneumonias. This is the first lecture in that series which is the introduction to pneumonias and the protective mechanisms of our respiratory system. The normal protective mechanisms, then we will disrupt those mechanisms. We will see how pathogens attack us and win and cause disease. So, let us start. First of all, the, there are three primary reasons why the lungs are prone to infections. One, look, they are open to the air and as we inhale, we bring in a variety of antigens and pathogens in the lungs. So, lungs are always bombarded by pathogens. So, that is one. Second, I am sure that you are aware that even healthy people, especially while sleeping, aspirate their oropharyngeal, um, you know, juices or saliva. And we sometimes when we are eating food, we incorrectly, the food enters the wrong pipe and then we have the saliva reach there as well. So, patients have the problem, there can be aspiration which brings the pathogens in the respiratory pathway and normal people have that problem as well, especially during the sleep. Third is that if there are other pathologies, other diseases of the lung, these diseases then predispose, make the lungs vulnerable, they make them weak to the pneumonias as well. So, because of this, it is actually a miracle that we do not keep getting pneumonias all the time. Our lungs protective mechanisms are very strong, however, they do break down every once in a while resulting in infections and pneumonias. So, let us look at the protective mechanisms. It is important to understand the protective mechanism so that you can then disrupt it and cause and understand the disease. Then you would correct it by giving the proper medications. So, let us see. Let us start from here. A person inhales or inspires through the mouth and the nose. So, these are the first layer of the protection. So, as the air passes through the nose, there are conchae, C O N C H A E. There are three conchae or turbinates. These turbinates are projections, bony projections covered by the epithelium, moist epithelium and what do these do other than moisturizing the air, they also prevent the passage of pathogens in. So, pathogens get stuck here and that is one mechanism. Then of course, the nasal hair also are part of that mechanism. On top of this, the nasal mucosa and basically all the respiratory epithelium is covered by secretions or moisture which, which have and we will talk about that over here, which has antibodies attached to them which most abundantly and most importantly IgA is present. We will talk about that here in a second. So, that is on the nasal side. Similarly, from the, from the mouth or the oropharyngeal side, as the air enters, the saliva in the mouth and then the immunoglobulins present in the saliva and the complement present in the saliva and the local flora in the nose and the mouth. Local flora means the bacteria, the pathogens that always are sitting there normally. They all would try to help prevent pathogens to go in. So, that is our first line of defense. Then, as, the, as we reach this area, the pharyngeal area, this area, here there are a couple of things that are important. One is the cuff reflex. What does the cuff reflex do? How does it help? One, if we have phlegm, phlegm is what the um, the mucociliary elevator, which we will talk about it here in a second, but the secretions 
from the lung that are washing away the pathogens and allergens and pollens and other bad things like smoke particles they bring them up and we cuff them and throw that out as phlegm sometimes we swallow that as well so that is one use of the cuff reflex the second use or the cuff the second use is cuff reflex is useful when there may be something that might enter the windpipe similarly we have epiglottic reflex so this little structure over here epiglottis this structure normally what does it do that when we are talking for example i'm talking right now epiglottis is open and trachea is open and connected to the nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal system and so that is how the air is going in and coming out when i swallow something when people swallow something when you swallow something what will happen is that the epiglottis will become horizontal this will become horizontal and because of the higher bone pulling it uh, pulling the the um, tracheal area and when it becomes horizontal it closes the passage to the trachea so the food will actually or water will actually go to the pharynx sorry esophagus from the pharynx so this is the esophagus instead of entering the trachea so now as the as we continue to enter the air continues to enter the pathway the respiratory pathway there are a few protections over there and we should look at those protections i'm going to put them here these protections should be looked at in two ways one is when you are or the patient is or the person is exposed to an allergen or antigen for the first time first exposure so let's say there is a there is a bacteria here is a bacteria that bacteria decided to enter the respiratory pathway and the nose did not do anything to prevent it and the mouth did not do anything to prevent it and it has entered the airway first possibility is that this pathogen will get trapped into the mucociliary elevator muco ciliary elevator what is that so the epithelium of the large airways have cilia on it plus plus there is lots of mucus secretion that is sticking there so what happens is this mucus is beaten upwards by the cilia cilia beat upward and move the mucus up so anything that gets trapped in this mucus is brought up slowly and finally we cuff it out or we swallow it so that is a mucociliary elevator that is the first line of defense inside the large airways let's say the pathogen evades that it continues to go on also remember in the large airways and throughout the airways we'll have immunoglobulins but we'll talk about that in a second when we we'll have second exposure this is the first exposure there are no antibodies to this pathogen yet now as the pathogen continues and let's say it has reached the alveoli it is here and it is quite a happy pathogen now and it says well you know what i'm going to do some infections now what happens is in here first line of defense is going to be not first one of the lines of defenses is the macrophage macrophage is part of the innate immune system as you know so i'm going to put that over here that there is innate immune system and there is acquired immune system and we'll see what what um, what structures and what contributors are helping so in the innate immune system macrophages will help now macrophages will engulf this pathogen either break it up and throw it out or they would actually macrophages themselves would travel upwards with the mucociliary elevator and will get cuffed out with the pathogen in them so that is one other mechanism then it is also possible that the pathogen here gets trapped into the secretions what are these secretions here so other than the mucus we also have surfactant in the alveoli 
Remember, surfactant is not present everywhere, but it is present in the alveoli. So, the secretion of the mucus, this is a mucus gland plus the surfactant, pathogen can get trapped in that and then slowly either mac, you know, macrophage is ingested or it gets moved out as well. This is a sad pathogen because it is going to be moved out. So, that is another mechanism. Then it is possible that the pathogen gets out of the gets out of the alveoli and reaches through the lymphatic. So, if I make a lymphatic channel here to a lymph node and we know that if pathogen reaches a lymph node, so this is a lymph node over there is going to be the immune system cells present as well that would help prevent the infection and combat this pathogen. So, that is another mechanism. Then it is also possible that there are the let us say a neutrophil is present here. So, polymorpho polymorpho nuclear polymorpho nuclear neutrophils or cells PMN cells are present here. Now, what happens is when the pathogen is here what can happen is that there are complement proteins. So, this is a blood vessel there are complement proteins that are coming in. So, let us say C 3 itself which is a really important protein. So, this is C 3. C 3 can become attached to the pathogen and C 3 A will become separated C 3 A becomes separated. So, let us say this is the A part and C 3 B part will become attached which will then cause it will then become released. We are not doing complement, but this is the alternate pathway. When the C3B would become activated, that would cause the activation of phagocytosis by neutrophils and phagocytes, right? C3B is like the candy. You attach it on the surface of a pathogen, and these, these macrophages and neutrophils would come and try to eat that candy, and they would eat the pathogen as well. So, that would happen. What will C3A do? C3A will is a chemotactic factor, right? So, A for arrival, it asks the, the inflammatory system cells to come in and help. So, C3A is a chemotactic agent and the result will be chemotaxis of what? More polymorphonuclear cells and more macrophages and more inflammatory cells to come in here. So, that would be the mechanism when there are no acquired arm is is involved. So, what are the characters then? Macrophages, neutrophils, complement proteins, especially what pathway? Alternate pathway. Are involved in the normal clearance. Now, let us look at the second exposure or or subsequent exposures. The, the person has been exposed to the pathogen once and now let us see what happens in the next time. So, here we have a re-exposure, a second exposure or subsequent exposure. This was the first time exposure. So, now what happens is the subsequent exposures, lymph nodes have done the activation of the B cells and T cells both has happened and the result is number one, we have antibodies. And what are the antibodies that are important? IgG and IgM in the alveoli. So, please do not forget this. In the alveoli, IgG and IgMs, IgG and IgM. On the mucosal surfaces, all the surfaces, all the way up to the nose and mouth, on the mucosal surfaces, IgA. So, three antibodies are now present. These antibodies are present why? Because the pathogen was taken to the lymph node. Lymph node has the B cells. B cells recognize the pathogen. You, we know that there is inflammatory process that causes the appropriate B cell to become active. That activated B cell has released antibodies. So, now the next time when the pathogen comes in. So, let us say this is the happy bacteria thinks he want to go in and cause some sort of pneumonia and now what is going to happen is the first possibility is 
other than all of this nose and mouth and trachea and all that. But the first possibility is that IgA will connect with the pathogen. So this is the I IgA. It will bind with the pathogen and it will prevent the pathogen from binding to the epithelial cells and cause damage there. Now this pathogen plus IgA complex will be cleared out through the mucociliary system and we would either swallow it or throw it out. Let us say pathogen has continued to move on and has reached the alveolus. If it has reached here, now what will happen is there are two things that will happen. One is the innate arm and the other one is acquired arm. On the innate arm side, we know now that antibody, especially IgG and pathogen, when they will connect, so let us say this is the pathogen and now there are antibodies that are present. When they will become attached, that would cause the classical complement pathway to become active. So complement C1 will become active and from there the complement cascade would start resulting again into number 1 C3A which we saw here as well, C3B which would cause the phagocytosis to increase plus membrane attack complexes to be formed which would help lyse and break down the pathogen. So that is a classical pathway. Classical pathway does not become active on the first time. It becomes active on the re-exposures because classical pathway needs antibodies and antibodies are not present on the first time. So that is the acquired arm plus the innate arm working together. How about the antibodies themselves? So of course IgG for example is an opsonin. So what will happen is IgG will bind with the pathogen and it would help opsonize it, correct? So now Ig, IgA here and IgG and IgM down here plus increase phagocytosis and breakdown plus the complement system activation plus increase opsonization. So that one more thing here, there are many, now there are many T cells present here as well. There are many T cells that have come out of here and they are here as well. What are these T cells doing here? Look, B cells are sitting here and they are sending, they have become plasma cells, they are active cells, right? So they are making antibodies and they are sending antibodies from remote posts they are firing antibodies. However, B cells that T cells that are cytotoxic like T cell cytotoxic T cells, they have to come into that area and combat and fight with the pathogens that are sitting inside the other cells. So cytotoxic T cells, natural killer cells have to come in and work there. So you would see some plasma cells but mostly the lymphocytes which are T cells present here. Now come back here on the re-exposure, what are we going to see? We are going to see complement. I'm going to write re-exposure in green. We'll see complement, but the classic pathway. We'll see acquired side will have antibodies IgA in the upper respiratory system and IgM and IgG inside the alveolar system or respiratory zone, alveolar, alveolar system. We'll also have B cells that are active, we'll have T cells and natural killer cells that are active. Here we have macrophages further activated and neutrophils that are present as well. Now this is the normal mechanism and this would help resolve the infection. Imagine if this mechanism cannot resolve the infection, then amplify this mechanism and we will start having pneumonia or the infection with the pneumonia problems that we will talk next. Thank you.